This past week, there's been tons of giant news stories in the world of NASCAR, and one story that really has been overshadowed by the other ones is the signing of Ross Chastain to Chip Ganassi Racing. Now, the news was announced earlier this week, but quickly brushed aside because there was news of Coda being in NASCAR as well as Michael Jordan entering the sport all in the same day. But I think that people shouldn't be overlooking just how incredible of a story it is to see Chastain in a truly top-level cup ride in NASCAR. Looking at Chastain's humble beginnings, he grew up a watermelon farmer on his family's farm until he was 13. This coincided with him starting to race at around the age of 12. His dad raced as a hobby, but Ross would be the first in his family to go all in on it. Fast forward to 2011, and at the age of 18, he would get his first big chance in NASCAR's top three divisions, getting five truck series starts. And in only his first career start, at the short track of IRP, no less, he went out in a Stacey Compton-owned Chevrolet and scored a top 10 finish, finishing 10th, an immediate flex of talent in only start number one. This really isn't a fluke as well, as three of his five starts in this initial year were top 20s. He was doing more with less. And moving forward, this really became the theme of his career. The next year, he would go full-time in trucks and once again, he raced above the equipment's value, scoring a top five and four top tens, with that top five being at Bristol of all places. This opened the door to Chastain getting a part-time truck series gig, driving for Brad Keselowski in 2013. This was the first glimpse of what Chastain could do in top equipment. Twice, he would earn poles, lead tons of laps, only to end up finishing runner-up. These were at Iowa and Phoenix, too, of all places, so they weren't talentless tracks to do it at. His lowest finish all season was 20th. After four top fives and seven top tens in 14 starts, he ended the year with a 10th place average finish, the second highest of anyone who started half of the races or more that year. The only driver that he trailed behind was the champion that season, Matt Crafton. This was enough to warrant him part-time rides in the then Nationwide Series as well as three non-memorable truck starts. In the Nationwide Series, he would split up seven races among three teams, Viva Motorsports, Hattori Racing, and TriStar. And at Viva, he would finish 18th at Charlotte and 29th at Daytona. At Hattori, he ran better, with two of his best finishes being 12th at Michigan and a top 10 10th place finish at Kentucky. He had a lone race at TriStar, and he got a 14th place finish there at Homestead. This opened up his options for 2015 and started what is, so far, the longest stint on a team in his career consecutively at JD Motorsports. And I'll say personally, this right here is when I started to notice Chastain the most. I can remember back to Chicagoland in 2015, where he straight up raced his way into the top 10 in a cup-filled, talent-filled field. Overall, in 2015 and 2016, much of his finishes would fall into the 11th to 20th place range, and four top 10s over the span added icing to that cake. This continued into 2017 and 2018, as in 2017, he got a top 5 and 2 top 10s, and in the first 23 races of 2018, he had a top 5 and 6 top 10s in JDM equipment. He was vastly overperforming his equipment. This is where a certain man by the name of Chip Ganassi comes into play. Seeing Chastain's talent, Ganassi put him in his 42 DC Solar Chevy at Darlington. And he stayed up front virtually all race before he and Kevin Harvick got together and wrecked while going for the lead. And while Harvick was extremely critical of Chastain in this moment, it wouldn't stop him two weeks later from finally breaking through in a top NASCAR series. Has shouldered the pressure. Down the backstretch for the final time. The opportunity given to Ross Chastain. Coming out of turn number four, he's going to earn his first win in the Xfinity Series. He would go on to finish 10th in the final point standings. But the future was bright as he was set to run in Ganassi's 42 car in the Xfinity Series full time. At least, that was until DC Solar was shut down after being exposed for being a Ponzi scheme before the season even started, meaning that he would have to scramble last minute and through the year to get work in each series. In Cup, he ran for Premium Motorsports almost the entire season, scoring a top 10 finish at the Daytona 500. 
In the Xfinity Series, he split part-time deals between JD Motorsports and Colleague Racing, getting another victory at Daytona. But where he ended up pledging his season points would be at the Truck Series midway through the season. He ran full-time for Nice Motorsports, grabbing three wins on his way to a second-place points finish. And now, this leads us to 2020. In trucks, Chastain continued a part-time ride for Nice. In Cup, he has a part-time ride with Spire Motorsports and filled in for Ryan Newman for three races after the Daytona 500. He has finished in the top 23 times, and two of those were in Spire equipment. But where he has pledged his points are the Xfinity Series. And so far this year for Colleague, he's only finished lower than 20th three times, two of those being at Daytona. He hasn't got a win yet, but he's finished second five times so far this year and is remarkably consistent. So it shouldn't have been too much of a surprise to see Ganassi once again call up Chastain, this time to the 42 car in the Cup Series for 2021. Sponsorship may be a minor issue, but more than likely, Credit One Bank, Advent Health, McDonald's, and Clover are not going to be exposed for being Ponzi schemes. So, the future looks unlimited for Chastain, and after the long winding road to get here, you kind of have to feel good for him. So after hearing all of this, I want to pass it on to you and ask, how do you think Chastain's going to run in 2021? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to hear more about this story or MJ and NASCAR, Coda, or whatever else is thrown into the NASCAR world so far today and all week, watch the NASCAR Weekly Podcast on my channel tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll also be joined by driver Ray Black Jr. tonight as well. So head on over and have some fun with us. But until then, leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.